Namaskaram. Good afternoon to one and all present here. Parthala Ponnamma lives between November 29, 1924 to 22 June 2021. She was an Indian Carnatic musician from South Indian state of Kerala. She was a classical Carnatic vocalist in the lineage of Seman Kuri Srinivasayar, Uthaya Bhagavada and Papanasam Shivam. She was the first woman to perform at Navratri Mandabam in Thronandabura as a part of Navratri celebration of Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple in Kerala. And she was the first female member of the teaching faculty at Swati Tiranath College of Music in Thiruvananthapuram. She was also the first woman principal to head the RLV College of Music and Fine Arts. Kondamal trained thousands of students in her long academic career, many of them being active in concerts now. Notable among them are M. Jirada Krishnan, V. Sita Lakshmi Ammal, Dr. Omna Kutti, Amrita Venkates, and many more. She has got thousands of admirers worldwide. Today, we are blessed to have a Carnatic vocalist, Vidushi Amrita Venkates. Thank you, Aishwarya. Now, I request Srimati Amrita Venkates, ma'am, to share her experience with her guru, Patma Shri Srimati Parthal Purnamal. Thank you. Namaste, everyone, and welcome to this lecture as well as interaction about Vidushi Parashala Viponama teacher. I had the honor of learning from Parashala Ponama teacher for about five years from 2016 onwards. Before that too, I had visited her house a few times and also had a few telephone conversations with her, each one very memorable. In this talk, I would like to highlight three main facets of Ponamal teacher. Ponamal teacher as a musician, Ponamal teacher as a guru and as a person. During each of our conversations during class and before I started learning from her, she would unfailingly mention something special related to her music learning, her gurus, her experiences teaching, her concert experiences, concert planning, and so on and so forth. I hope to share with you many things that I've heard directly from her. She used to mention that her first guru was Vidwan Vaidyanatha Iyer in Parashala, from whom she learned her basic lessons. She was very attached to her younger sister, Sharada Ambal. The family had to relocate to Adur from Parashala, when the two sisters were singing once, a Bhagavatar named Sri Paramupillai Bhagavatar happened to pass by. Overjoyed at the chaste singing of the two sisters, he walked into their residence and told their father that he would be happy to teach them. She used to recount a few episodes over and over again, and this was one such. She used to say that Paramupillai Bhagavatar had a very solid patantram and teaching method. He was sent by God that day, was what she would always say. Here is another incident that she would go on to recount multiple times. Once, her father brought her all the way to Tiruvananthapuram from Parashala for a competition that was held to celebrate Maharaja Chitra Tirunal's birthday. Doyans like Sri Muttaya Bhagavatar, Vidwan Semangudi Srinivasa Iyer, and Professor Srinivasan were among the judges. She nervously presented before them Kalyani Alapana, followed by Kamalambam Bhajare, and was asked to sing a few rounds of Swaram by Samanguri Srinivasa Iyer. So after her rendition, she went to her father very dejected and said, Then they started walking back to the bus stop immediately. They were quite a distance away when a person came chasing after them on a cycle and shouted out that Ponamal had won the first prize at the competition and that Professor Srinivasan had asked for her to be brought back to receive the prize. And this was a gold medal that she received from Sri Muttaya Bhagavatar. And that was the first prize or recognition she received on the screen. You can see the gold medal, both the front and the back of the gold medal that she won. <clears throat> At this juncture, Professor Srinivasan told her father, 
இந்த மாதிரி வசத்தியான பாட்டு பாடசாலையில இருக்கா அண்ட் ஸ்ரீ முத்தையா பாகவதர் இன்சிஸ்டட் தட் த ஃபேமிலி மூவ் டு திருவனந்தபுரம் இன் ஆர்டர் தட் பொன்னமாள் பர்சியூஸ் ஹர் மியூசிக் எஜுகேஷன் as வெல் ஆஸ் பாசிபிள் தி என்டயர் ஃபேமிலி பிலீவ்ட் வெரி ஸ்ட்ராங்லி இன் அஸ்ட்ராலஜி அண்ட் ஆன் கன்சல்டிங் தி அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் தென் தே டிசைடட் இட் வுட் பி பெஸ்ட் ஃபார் த ஃபேமிலி டு மூவ் டு திருவனந்தபுரம் தென் on the advice of harikeshan alur shri mutya bhagavatar she joined the swati tirunal music academy as a student she was recognized by all india radio and it was there that her name became parashala d ponnamal since there was another paravur ponnamal on the air's rolls and that would lead to confusion and hence her name was made parashala d ponnamal she did her gaika course at the swati tirunal academy and then the gana bhushanam course came into existence and she completed her degree of gana bhushanam when she passed out of the college during vidwan shri samangudi shrinivas ayer's stint as principal at the swati tirunal academy she was appointed as the first lady teacher at the academy and after this came another turning point of her life when Sri Samangudi Srinivas Iyer told her that she is welcome to come and learn from him any kriti any composition she wished to Soon after Ponamal was married to Devanayaga Iyer who is said to have been encouraging and taken her to her music classes with Samangudi Srinivas Iyer Ponamal was very good at writing down notations and this talent of hers was spotted by her gurus very early and as her guru composed the tune for songs of composers like shrimati ambujam krishna vidushi ponamal would write down the notation as it was being composed she had a list of favorite songs of papanasam shivan like parvati nayakane in shanmukha priya nada pranava vadivam in shuddha saveri tanigai valar in todi eesanai in chakravakam and all of these songs she learned directly from the composer shri papanasam shivan and i was fortunate to have learned all these songs from her during our first few classes she used to say that her family life was quite smooth since her younger sister sharadambal whom she adored took on the responsibility of managing her children as well as all the household chores a landmark incident that was the biggest turning point in the life of parashala ponama teacher was more recently in 2005 when my guru prince ramavarma sir invited her to perform at the prestigious navaratri mandapam let us listen from prince ramavarma sir himself what he has to say about this meeting and how he invited her to the mandapam and my sincere gratitude to ramavarma sir for having made this video especially for this lecture could we listen to that please one of the most prestigious festivals of indian classical music is conducted at the navaratri mandapam in tiruvannathapuram women were not allowed inside this mandapam either to perform or even to listen to music they had to sit outside i became passionately interested in music from the time i was a young teenager and from the time i was around 15 16 years old i started questioning this tradition of why women were not allowed inside the mandapam in honor of goddess saraswati who is a woman this went on for many many years and finally in year 2005 or 6 a decision was taken to allow women to enter the mandapam it was at that time there was no facebook and uh, whatsapp the social media was not as big as it is it it is now who would be the first woman to sing at the navaratri mandapam that was a million dollar question and the only name i could think of was vidushi parasala ponamal whom all of us affectionately call as ponamal teacher i had been a regular listener of ponamal teachers amazing music from early 1980s and we had met uh, formally in a few places but i can't say i was acquainted with her so i went to her house and 
told her that Navratri Mandapam is getting open for women. Would you be the first lady to sing there? And she was really shocked at that time. But finally she sang there and very, very fortunately for her, for me and for all of us music lovers, soon after her concert there, YouTube was invented. And one of the earliest videos I uploaded on YouTube was Parasala Panamal's teacher. And once that video started getting viewed by people in Bangalore, in Chennai, in Bombay, in America, in many places, the invitations just started pouring in and she could not sit at home because the invitations, the recognition, the awards, so many things poured in and till the last uh, few months she was very, very active. Unfortunately, because of the lockdown, she had to kind of wind up and stay at home. But now as a 53-year-old person, if somebody asks me what is the best thing you have ever done in life, without doubt I can say it is to have invited the Panamal teacher to not only invited her to the Navaratri Mandapam, but to have put her on YouTube and seen this glorious second innings she's had in her career. I feel very happy that our combined beloved disciple Vidushi Amrita Venkatesh is doing this presentation on Panamal teacher. I'm very happy to share a few cherished memories of mine. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your input and for adding so much value to this presentation once again. So the first song she started with was the magnum opus Todi Ragam Padavarnam of Maharaja Swati Turnal, Dani Samajendra Gamini. You won't believe, but at that advanced age, she took the trouble to learn the composition to present at the Navaratri Mandapam, and she sang it without a piece of paper in front of her. Let's listen to just a minute of that clipping of her rendering Dani Samajendra Gamini at the Navaratri Mandapam. The, please remember, this is the first time a lady's voice is ever heard inside this hallowed venue. Can we listen to that, please? I was so inspired by this rendition, which Ramavarma sir put up on YouTube, like he mentioned, that when I got an invitation to sing at the Navaratri Mandapam from him, I wanted to sing this as the first song. So I ended up learning it to sing at the Navaratri Mandapam during my first concert there in 2008. Ponamal teacher's 90th birthday was celebrated by the residents of Valiasala in Tiruvannathapuram. And I had the privilege of performing this same Varnam along with my Guru Rama Varma sir and we sang a duet to celebrate this wonderful occasion. A snippet of that rendition as well.
let's now move on to her concert presentation panama teachers concert presentation her body language on stage was very unassuming she hardly made any hand gestures while singing i would think that she clung on to her handkerchief tight in her left hand to avoid moving it sometimes she said that in her early years of concert singing she would be so scared to even lift her eyes up and look at the audience and she would always have her head down and sing all the grip modulation punch verve brigas gamakams would be executed with hardly any movement of the head or the hands wave after wave of tasteful prayogams would hit the listeners at unimaginably regular intervals a very dignified nod of approval at the co-artists playing would be the only movement we could see sometimes her pre-concert nerves were very disarming she would fold her hands in respect to gods and gurus and keep saying somehow i have to manage to sing this concert well god should help me i don't think my throat is all right today i think i have a cold i don't know how i'll be able to sing so this was her routine dialogue before the concert but one could see how sincerely she meant that the elders and the gods should be standing with her when she performs anywhere i have visited her twice or thrice before just before her navaratri mandapam concert and tried to ask her what she plans to sing with a sparkle in her eyes having already planned what she would sing she would never reveal what was planned and we would have a laugh after that she commanded a lot of respect from artists and students of so many generations she was thrilled when musicians visited her or when co-artists visited about what she was going to sing in the concert that they are going to accompany her for she liked medium to faster tempos of songs but was equally at ease with slower tempo songs as well she had a very dignified and measured approach to concert performing nothing was in excess be it the raga alapana or the nerval or or the kalpana swarams everything was measured to the point and conveying the raga bhava very sweetly in the gist she had a booming clear voice that would make anyone sit up and take notice she was equally at ease with any ragam be it a shankara bharanam or a vachaspati or a natakuranji or a sindh bhairavi or a nadana makriya she wasn't inclined too much towards complicated talams at least towards the later part of her life when i had the privilege of being under her she didn't spend too much time planning core wise or muktayams for swarams when she sang swarams it would be a seamless extension of the mood of the composition sometimes she would revel in singing swarams at the atita edupus like in siddhi vinayakam in the chamaram composition of muthu swami dikshitar prasiddha gananayakam so that starts before the beat prasiddha gananayakam at that point in the sahityam she would sing swarams or at karam bujapash bija puram in vatapi ganapati she was very gracious to accept the applause of the audience sometimes she would very sweetly clap for herself also after finishing some compositions she would treat her disciples with utmost affection and respect and the disciples on stage who gave her vocal support too were treated really well by panama teacher i have had the wonderful experience of having listened to her sing at the mandapam where there are no electric lights and the concert timing is 6 to 8:30 pm she would after almost every song bend over to her disciple and ask whether she has time left and only after she got a confirmation from the disciple would she continue singing though she would have a lot of time left irrespective of the venue of the concert or the occasion or the theme or the duration she would prepare diligently for it and give her 100% nothing was taken for granted her music was so genuine exactly like her i would like to now share with you my experience of having learnt from her for a few years every class is etched in my memory just like it happened yesterday let me tell you a bit about how that 
meeting came about for the first time. In January 2016, I requested my Guru Ramavarma sir to request Pannumal teacher to teach me. He was gracious enough to take me to her house and request her if she could share songs from her repertoire with me, to which she gleefully agreed. She was very particular about punctuality and would be thrilled if I entered her house a few minutes early for class. She had an impeccable thoroughness in the way she presented herself in classes, in concerts, when visitors came, or even when she was just at home. She would pay attention to details like making sure that the students were comfortable by switching on the fan at the speed they wanted it to be in. She would make sure the room had enough light so that we could see what we were writing down or we could see the book. She would sit on an armchair and adjacent to her, she would place a chair and arrange neatly on that chair, her spectacle case, a small container with an Ayurvedic powder for her throat, a handkerchief and a glass of water. She would prop her leg up on a very small stool to prevent excessive swelling. She loved narrating anecdotes from her past during the coffee breaks and sometimes during class too. She and her family, her son, daughter-in-law, granddaughters, made sure that every visitor was given the choicest of eats like laddu, poli, jalebi, muruku, mixture, coffee, you name it, and I've eaten it there. She was very particular about retaining her patantram and very particular about the way gamakams should be sung, as is evident from this next clipping you will listen to. This is a small clipping from my class of, of me learning from her. Deva Deva in the Ragam Todi, set to Misha Chaputalam, a composition of Maharaja Swati Tirnal in praise of Tirvattar Sri Adikeshava Permal. So, may can we listen to the class Deva Deva clipping? Yes. <laughs> If you noticed at the beginning of this clipping, she said a small prayer to God before she started teaching the song. That was the kind of bhakti she had towards the music as well as towards God. I'm sure she would have thought about Tiruvatta Radhikeshwa Parmal just before she started the song. And at the beginning of the clip, just before I start writing down what she's teaching me, she very quickly takes the recorder from my hand so that I don't have that added distraction of having to hold the recorder. That was how considerate she was. Her formidable repertoire included compositions of the Trinity, Maharaja Swati Tirnal, Subaraya Shastri, Papanasam Shivan, Muttaya Bhagavatar, Ambujam Krishna, G. N. Balasubramanyam, Matru Bhutaya, the Tanjavur Quartet, Kerala composers like Irayman Tampi, K. C. Keshava Pillai, K. N. Gopala Pillai, Kuti Kunchitankachi, Rukmini Bai Tamburati, many Varnams, Kritis, Padams, Tukudas, Tillanas, and devotional songs. She has had many 
feature programs for the All India Radio, and she's done many feature programs like the Kuche Lopa Khyanam, Aja Me Lopa Khyanam, Padmana Bhashatakam, Bhakti Manjari, as well as Navavida Bhakti Kritis of Maharaja Swati Tirunal, to name a few of them. Here is a snippet of her rendition of a verse from the Syanam Dura Varnana Prabandham of Maharaja Swati Tirunal, which was tuned by her in the ragam Sindhu Bhairavi. Athata Dhani. She would also say that she was extremely fortunate to have had a very good formal Sanskrit education. And she would keep recounting her experiences having recorded the Meenambika Stotram as well as the Guruvayur Suprabhatam. During class, she would never once look at the time. She was so willing to teach the compositions for hours on an end. Sometimes I had to remind her that her coffee was getting cold or that her leg had slipped off the stool to the ground, only then would she momentarily be aware of how much time had lapsed. She sang 99.9% .9 of the songs from memory, with every single Sangati intact. Unless it was a very long song like a multiple stanza Ragamalika or a Padavarnam that she had learned many decades ago, she would never, almost never use a book to sing. Here is another sample video of Sharavana Bhava Guhane in the Ragam Madhyamavati, a composition of Papanasam Shivan that was taken just after she taught this to me. She was a specialist at songs with Chittaswarams, and one could see how, she, how happy she was singing them. She had a charming way of saying the word Chittaswarams as Chittaswarams with the A uh, elongated. And during class, I would deliberately make her say the word a few times and ask her to sing a few Chittaswarams from the songs. 
and during class if the song was a fast one she would just sing the entire chittaswaram at one go and ask edi acha mansila acha and then looking at the perturbed look on my face she would smile sweetly and sing it again and i would think she would slow it down a bit or split it phrase by phrase and teach me but no she would just go on with the entire chittaswaram and with the entire chittaswaram and i had to learn it later from the recording but these were really memorable moments from my class she has even performed a thematic concert with just compositions with chittaswarams here is a sample of her all time favorite chittaswaram passage from the kriti gajavadana notice how much of bhavam she puts into each of the swarams especially the gandharams the varied gamakams on the gas this is shri atendra bhupati's composition in the ragam todi gajavadana sammodita veera in praise of muruga can we listen to the chittaswaram please are she never applied for any post or award or grade or recognition ellam thana vandad she used to say so many awards and recognitions came her way during the during her 80s and 90s the padma shri award in 2017 can we have a look at the slide from there please samya yes so this is her receiving the padma shri award in 2017 from the then president shri pranab mukherjee the next slide shows us her showing the medal for a photo and the, her citation can we look at slide uh, the next slide yes this is her ttk award from the madras music academy and the next slide shows us just how many awards she had won this is this is taken uh, on uh, two three a photo of two three shelves in her house i have just put it as a collage one below the other so it looks like it's a showcase it's just single rows of awards rows and rows of awards adorn her house she has won the acharya chudamani from krishna gana sabha the chembai puraskaram from guruvayur swati puraskaram from the government of kerala and the kerala and kendriya sangeet natak academy awards and fellowships and all these awards were very special to her and she loved awards and awards loved her but at no point did these awards ever make her feel like she was extremely superior there was no air about her she was always the same ponamal teacher till the end she was an extremely kind hearted and caring person she never spoke bad about anyone to give you an example there was a concert of a very popular musician that she happened to hear on the radio and after that we had a conversation just after that because she would normally call me to ask me how my concert went and i happened to have a concert on the same day she heard this radio relay of this popular artist and said ni ketta avaloda paadinadhu a uh, ketam uh, ketam pati is what i said and then she said unak enna thoni thava paata patti romba romba per vaangina vidushi illaya abdi that was my answer and then she said aama aama nariya perku vera vera maadri paatu pidikum illaya and she stopped it there so there was no further conversation negative positive or belittling the other artist nothing of that sort she was also very generous in her appreciation 
of excellence. Her entire family was very supportive of her and vice versa. She loved her granddaughters, Lakshmi and Lalita, and was very proud that they pursue music too, apart from their academic careers. I will conclude this segment with a video of Lalita and Lakshmi singing a Tillana from a concert that happened last week. And before I wind up, I would like to thank my disciple, Ms. Saumya, for having helped me with the slides as well as helping me with showing all of you the videos during this session. After this video, I'll be happy to take your questions. A thank you to Speak Mac A2 for having invited me to give this lecture. Let's listen to Ponama teacher's granddaughters sing the Hamsanandi Tilana of Harikeshnallur Shri Muttaya Bhagavatar. <laughs> 